Well, according to my calculations, the year 2000 was 23 years ago. How the hell did that happen? Let's see how many of these British 2000s sitcoms you can remember. Number one, Badil's Syndrome, Sky One. 2001, David Badil wrote a comedy in which the lead character is named David Badil. This was touted as Britain's answer to Seinfeld at the time, and in fact was shown just before Seinfeld in the schedules. The influence of American TV is undeniable in this one. My porn star name would be Dingle Littlehampton Uhuru. <laughs> that doesn't sound anything like a porn star. It sounds like an unsuccessful member of the ANC. Kirsty, we're just talking about our first pets. Really? She's fabulous. All those adorable little mannerisms. Are you mental? <laughs> Let's just take one of those mannerisms, okay? That thing of telling an anecdote and then going, and I was like, ah! So what you're doing is you're taking innocuous habits of this charming young woman and magnifying... Let me stop you there. Number two, Angelo's, Channel 5, 2007. This 2000s sitcom was set in a grimy London cafe, which was the go-to place for a bunch of weird and wonderful characters whose lives intersected at various stages. Angelo is the guy who runs the cafe, and he was played by Steve Brody. What are you wearing? My new top. What's wrong with it? Oh, no, it's, it's very nice. Just you look a little bit cold. I mean, I'm 35 now, so, you know, time really is... Yeah, no one hears their clock ticking louder than Karen. That's not true. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> He's good-looking, isn't he? No. He's tall, though. He's standing on a box. Promising. Um, do you mind just answering this and um, saying I'm unavailable? Oh, what do you want me to say this time? Well, just say uh, I popped down to accounts. It, it, it's Christine. It's only Christine. Yeah, well, I don't want to lie. They're all... One trick ponies. Number three, Lead Balloon, BBC Four and BBC Two, 2006 to 2007. This was dreadful. Absolutely dreadful, in my opinion. It starred Jack D as, wait for it, a curmudgeonly stand up comedian named Rick Spleen. He is unhappy with essentially everything and everyone and is constantly plagued by pet hates and personal embarrassments. It also starred Tony Gardner who basically plays the same character in every single thing he's in. Cannot find a single teaspoon. The entire kitchen just grinds to a halt. Use a big one. Well, it's not the fuse. Not the fuse. Was it me or you said it wouldn't be the fuse? I can't remember now. Hi, Matt, Dad. Hello. It's only a few months old. I bought it here. Oh, right. You got the uh, guarantee? No. You got a receipt? No, I haven't got the receipt either, but I am a regular customer. Right. Did you keep the box? No, I didn't. Of course I didn't keep the box. Why would I keep the box? I... Just general driving, I think. Just you know. general driving. I was, uh, was alright with uh, with indicating. Mm. Yeah, they kept asking him things about, like, road markings and reversing and that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, the point is, it makes a lot of noise. I see. Um, well, it wouldn't really bother me. I'm with you, Michael. Only because I'm always up at that time of day. Number four, Horrible, BBC Two, 2001. This one starred Johnny Vaughan, who described the show himself as SH1T. He played a taxi driver named Paul Clark, who was also a wannabe little gangster. It was apparently absolutely hated by critics, not only because of the dire scripts, but because of Johnny Vaughan's acting, although, to be honest, very few of them are any good. Cash point on wheels, isn't it? I can't sit at home all day twiddling my thumbs, spunking all my money out the wall just because I'm bored. End up with nothing. Do you miss it all then? Do I miss it? What was that all about? Ah, Ralph don't want Shane drop out of college. You know, he feels it no lean. She just The phone that I'm talking about. Who was on the phone? I'm high on something that's passing you by, Lee. Life. Oh, yeah, what's so spectacular about your life then? Gap week and they're paying cash. Huh? Actually, if you must know, Shiv, today I've been doing a bit of work for uh, the Big M, you know. Shorty boy! All right, mate? All right, Paul. All right, Lee? All right, Shiv? <coughs> on what planet are you two on the day? Number five, Parents of the Band, 2008 to 2009, BBC One. 
This one was written by Jimmy Nail and Tarquin Gotch. Is that a real name? I hope so. Nail also starred in the show as Phil Parker, the father of a teenage drummer in a band. Phil himself happens to have been in a band in his earlier life too, and so now acts as his son's manager. Now, you look a bit hungry, kid, so I'm going to knock you up one of my special Sarnies. Um, no thanks, Dad. Mum's making me a meal. Is she making it? Or does she just nick a couple of microwave dinners out of first class? Oh my god, I'm going to die before I've even had sex. They wear our clothes. They still go to gigs and they listen to the same music we do. I mean, it's impossible to piss them off. Good game. Outstanding. I beat him like a drum. <laughs> I let them take the last game. There's no point in totally humiliating a client. You're all hearts. Mm -hmm. So, can we colour you impressed? Uh, it's very nice. Saves me putting together an Ikea one. I'm hopeless with those flat pack things. Number six, Respectable, Channel 5, 2006. This short-lived sitcom takes us to a brothel of all places. Michael Price, played by Justin Edwards, is fed up of his loveless marriage, so decides to go and see some hookers. But rather than doing the deed because he's too nervous, he ends up making friends with one of the girls. I haven't really got time for silly mysteries these days, Michael. I mean, £82 a square metre for slate bathroom flooring. I thought you'd sorted this out. I speak to Barry in the morning. Is that what you really want, Michael? Do you really want to come home and find me sprawled across the kitchen table in skimpy little knickers from Marks and Spencers? All right, let's see what you got under there, darling, shall we? Right, I'm just going to so, pop these... there are three of us in this field outside Perpignan, and he just in our boxer shorts, and 20 miles away, Lawrence Delalio is lifting the Heineken Cup. We never even got to see the match. <laughs> Number seven, Sam's Game, ITV 2001, another short-lived one. This starred Davina McCall in her first acting role as the titular Sam and Ed Byrne as Alex. Sam is a single lass who lives in a flat which she also sublets to an Irish bloke named Alex. Apparently, Sam is big-hearted and gutsy. According to the newspapers from the time, she is an up-for-it media babe, apparently. Alex, on the other hand, is a bit more neurotic, so it's an odd couple scenario, isn't it? In Sam's game, you shouldn't have any secrets from your friends. The truth leaked out, and you with the leak. You should be able to tell them anything, <laughs> even what you really think of their girlfriend. Couldn't stand her. Soul-sucking witch. Well, perhaps not. Davina McCall in Sam's game. New comedy, Monday, 10.30, ITV. Number eight, according to Bex, BBC One, 2005. Meet Bex Atwell, a single woman in her 20s working as a secretary. She is on the lookout for the perfect man and the perfect job. And this one was named the biggest sitcom disaster of the year by the stage newspaper and it was cancelled after just one series and according to good old Wikipedia, the star Jessica Hines, who was Stevenson at the time, thought it was so terrible that she fired her agent. Only great cheese it also plays 12 of my favourite tunes. <laughs> That's right, Debbie. Just listen. There's got to be something more than this. Seeing other people. <laughs> Why not? We're certainly not going anywhere. In fact, we've lost the map, we've run out of petrol, and you've fallen asleep at the wheel. <laughs> if this is about last night, I was tired, all right. No, this time it's really over. Oh, please, Ryan always cracks. Actually, I do. Uh, yeah, right. Last week he called you. Two weeks ago, he called you. No milk. Yesterday you didn't want milk. Yes, because Thursdays are lactose-free. Today, no gluten. <laughs> I'll alert the media. <laughs> Number nine, Shane. ITV 2004. Frank Skinner starred as Shane. And Frank also wrote the show as well. Shane is the second taxi driver on our list. His wife is a mature student doing drama and writing. His daughter is a 17-year-old feminist and his son is a chip off Shane's old block. It's another one that got terrible reviews and in the show's own words, there must be something better than this. There must be something better than this because if there's nothing better than this, what is the point of carrying on? And if you tell me there's a point... I think she's quite a new friend. I don't know anything about her other than she's American. Well, you know what she'll be like? Big arse and a handgun. <laughs> And I'll tell you now, if she starts whooping, I'm going down the pub. It's a great book. It's about a man who's brought up by apes. I know who Tarzan is. I grew up with Tarzan. 
Yeah, I can believe that. Audrey. <laughs> Wife in room. The only reason two women drive over a cliff is because neither one of them can read a map. <laughs> but I mean it, Velma. You have to come stay with me in L.A. Loads of photographers, cameras flashing. You should have seen me. A hair caught in the headlights. You should have sat further up the bonnet. <laughs> Hi. I helped myself to milk and cookies. Sorry, have I accidentally walked into the little house on the prairie? <laughs> Oh, I guess that's very American of me, right? And number 10, Catterick, BBC Three and BBC Two in 2004. Vic and Bob star in this one, so you know it's going to be completely mental. It was quite enjoyable for the most part, but sadly it also starred the bald one of Shooting Stars, and I cannot stand the guy. It's kind of hard to describe the premise of Vic and Bob's stuff, because it's Vic and Bob, in it. But the duo play two brothers who reunite after 15 years apart, and then... Well, things happen, you know. I can't, Mr. Oates. It's indelible. I'm not asking you to eat it! And do those people at Crink know what a startling stain their product causes? Look, I don't know if it helps, but last night I was wiping myself off with a flannel and I got a Werther's original stuck to it. Where pensioners can guard their melon patches without fear of Huckleberry Fenstow moonlight attacks. I say, Pat, I think I might have just accidentally fed your dog. Shit. Yeah, how did you know? Do you want this spatchcock? What is it? It's a type of flattened chicken. Did you just say hand then? Yes, I did. I enjoyed it. Do you mind if I use it? If you like. And there you have it. Ten 2000 sitcoms that you might have forgotten about, but maybe not. But it doesn't matter because it's just a little bit of nostalgia. Did I miss any out? You let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel and share this video to your pals. All that good stuff. Bye for now.